Welcome to Oklahoma, where we use our 64 two-door Impalas to store our ski shooting clay pigeon things. Warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. You don't want to see a snap, uh, snap bolt crank. <laughs> Crank bolt snap. Bet y'all thought we were gonna do a wheel it run on this thing. Well, there's one problemo. As much as you just seen that timing chain move, the cylinders ain't moving one bit. <laughs> I don't claim to be an engine guy. I just know that's a problem. That's it. <laughs> I checked the oil the other day. The oil was obnoxiously full, but it looked good actually. It was pretty clean oil. Checked the radiator. She was low, didn't see no antifreeze. When I went to drain the oil pan, I found missing antifreeze and realized why the oil pan was so full of oil. <laughs> Cause that oil floats on antifreeze and it had about 25 years to separate. As much as I'd like to tear into this engine, even if I find the problem, I'm not spending the money to put it back together cause I'm gonna sell this thing. And I think the chances of whoever buys this more than likely is gonna end up doing an engine swap on it. On the small chance someone wants to keep this junky 1.8, and I know I'm gonna catch some slack for calling it a junky 1.8, but I think you guys would rather take it apart and be able to sort the stuff instead of me take it apart till I find the problem, throw all the gear in the back, and then say, here you go. Kinda sucks, this thing did clean up good. Let's come out and play with me and the boys, huh? There's another El Chapo tunnel. If three won't hold it, six never would have. Did you order an Uber? Also in this video, I told you guys not to disrespect the love machine. Talk about Cheech and Chong 64 Impala. It kind of got me wanting to sniff out an old Impala. So I started <laughs> sniffing around, seeing what I could come up with. And I'll be damned if my buddy didn't just happen to drag one in. So we've got to load up the old travel all and put some miles underneath her high heels and get down to eight Oklahoma. Can't forget the creeper. Whew. You might notice that old table that's been lurking in the background is finally out of here. My wife assumes I like doing projects like that. She knows good and well I don't. <laughs> but it puts me in a time crunch again because uh we got today for something to go good. Then two days to get it edited so y'all can enjoy it on Monday. We are loaded down and ready to get the hell out of town. Except I need to stop and get some petrol. We made it out here at old DNH Classics. Now I told y'all before we'll end up doing a walk around out here. I really want Dale in here. Uh, that way he can tell some of the stories. It's him and his buddy Holden. Holden, I've never heard him even say a word, but I'm going to get you to crack one day, and I'm going to get you to talk, buddy. Uh, here's what we're here to see. If a two-door hardtop Impala don't get you excited, I don't know what does. Just happens to have a Chevy Love right up front. Y'all think she'll buff out like ours did? wonder if she's got a free motor. This one's rat lays way smaller turds than ours did. Maybe these two girls are cousins. I think we got a better chance of getting ours running. It's just like a damn family reunion out here. Who remembers the old prince? It's a miracle! <laughs> Get him, Shane! Here she is. Rescued it from one salvage and sold some stuff off of it and ended up at another salvage. I don't know what he has going on here. I can just assume. You ain't got to be a damn mathematician to see that one plus one in this situation is going to equal one. I know y'all thought I was going to say two, but that ain't proper math when you take two cars and make them one. That's some junkyard math for you. Some things just feel right, you know. He did text me back. It does run, but it needs a fuel pump, which sucks because I was about to ask him if I could take this thing for a few hot laps. Might be a little biased here with internationals, but you can't tell me that thing ain't badass. Someone needs to build that. She's partially there anyhow. Oh man, I'm about to call him and say, hell with that 64, we got an international on our hands. Because finding one ain't good enough, you have to go and find an SS too. 
I'm acting like my daughter when I tell her she can pick out a $10 toy. Hell, I'm just all over the place right now. And put my blinders on and stay focused. Here's the old girl we came to see. So the other day he drags this thing in. It was all dirty, been sitting forever. Uh, one owner, no, guy bought it off the original owner in 66. It only had 900 miles on it at that time. I gotta find out how long she's been sitting. I don't quite remember. Uh, but the next day he posted all cleaned up. He gave her a bath and I'm like, stop right there, hot dog, slow it down. Let me come check that thing out. When I first moved back to Oklahoma, I had a 64 four-door Biscayne. Underneath that was all brand new. The body was just, it was decent, you know, but I was looking for a two-door Impala to combine it with. Long story short, that's how I ended up finding the shop truck was that thing was on Craigslist forever. And then all of a sudden I'm an international guy. Hell, I don't know how that worked out. From Impalas to Internationals. Just playing, I still love my Internationals. My four doors long gone, I sold it, but I still want those cars that when I see one, I just get a little excited. So we talked a little bit, and basically, I need some content for you guys, anyhow. He said, Hey, man, I was going to try to get that damn thing started. If you want to come get it started and check it out, see if you're interested, you know. There you go. Well, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. That works for me. It works for him. I get you guys a video. Uh, let's check this thing out. We well, ain't gave her the full over yet, but she pretty well seems to have all the trim on her. I might be a little biased here, but I do like my blue colors. A real good hand scrubbing would probably go a long way with her. Maybe a little bit of that sweet patina sauce. Two-door hard top white top i dig the white on the blue all the trim looks pretty good usually you got a piece tore here tore there of course we ain't made it to the other side there's our first whoop de do spotted right there we got a little whoop de but you know not bad these cars are pretty bad about rusting out down in there that's where they get you oh open trunk for us dylan that is not in the trunk, buddy. That is on the ground. <laughs> we'll get back to that in a minute. Yeah, you can see what the blue's supposed to look like in here. So the other cool thing about doing this wheel it run, Dylan said, hey man, because I was gonna try to get that thing started, I'll go ahead and get some parts in case you need some stuff, you know, we'll have it there. <laughs> well, now I remember him texting me and saying, hey man, I put the stuff in the trunk. <laughs> That's not the trunk. That's the ground, buddy. I could have got it whether I opened that trunk or not. <laughs> Welcome to Oklahoma, where we use our 64 two-door Impalas to store our ski shooting clay pigeon things. Oh, told y'all. Told y'all before you can always find some WD-40. So I don't buy it. I find it everywhere. Shit. Certified hydraulic heavy-duty brake fluid. Made in Dallas, Texas. Y'all know why it's so windy in Oklahoma? Because Texas sucks and Kansas blows. <laughs> Just playing. I'm actually a big fan of Texas. She could use a quarter. We got some rust there. Rust down in the lower quarter. But then we got the old rib job overlapping sheet metal repair from way back when. Which then goes back to me questioning, you know, did an Impala ever come this color? I actually really don't know. <laughs> The problem with a repair like that is it works until it doesn't. And it ain't working no more. One quarter on these ain't too bad. Uh, still looking like a buildable car for sure. All right, you got my you got my attention now. What in the one inch pipe thread booger weld we got going on here, Dylan? I don't see anywhere that would attach to, so. <laughs> Maybe they were working on some custom center caps. Dad always told me to put things back where you find them, so. All the trim's in pretty good shape, and all the glass appears to be in it, so that's pretty good still. Uh, like I said, pretty much that quarter, I'd say, is the worst part. Well, and the trunk pan. And the Flintstone floor pans. It looks like this rat was trying to fix the damn floor pans with a stick pattern. That back seat says luxury, baby. She could use some floor pans and some love on the inside. Whoa. Yeah, she looks good. <laughs> Little bare bones. Uh, that's not a collapsed hinge. That's a hood hinge delete 
right there. It looks like you took the sawzall to it. <laughs> I don't see power brakes, power nothing on this thing. She's a pretty bare bone unit. That ain't the lightest hood I've ever picked up. Yeah. This thing looks like it was set up about how the Chevy Love was. Just a whole rat's nest. Looks like we might have a 283 here. Nice and filthy, exactly what I was hoping to work on today. Even if we do get her started, I don't think she's going to hold any water. <laughs> we ain't got no belts to run accessories three on the tree that works for me pretty well try to stay away from chevrolets because no one's surprised when they run because they're chevrolets i did have the free 10 and we got that 305 going but that's a little more you know different situation but the 305 h2o that a lot of people don't know about these things would flat out run underneath the hood two dead giveaways water injection tank with the pickup hose and water injection hose to the two barrel carburetor the water would actually inject into the motor. Now when it was in there, it helped vaporize the fuel for higher combustion. And also, it would clean out the combustion chambers from the water, keeping it for a smoother surface, allowing more flow through the engine and more horsepower. That had that real rare H20 305 in it that a lot of people didn't know about and we got it fired up. I'd say let's see if we can get her turned by hand. Uh, if we can get her turned by hand, let's see if we can get it to turn with the starter. I think that's a pretty solid starting point. My four-door Biscayne had power steering and power brakes, and I always called it the poor man's Impala, but I'm pretty sure we just found the poor man's Impala. Start with an oil check here, and Dylan did just text me back, and this thing was parked in the 70s, so that makes me feel good about it. Yeah, she's got oil. She's a little low. Oil really don't look too bad, actually. Actually still smells like fresh oil, so. Maybe we'll get lucky here. Best smelling oil I've come across so far, believe it or not. Good indicator we got a 283 because we ain't got a crank bolt on it. The 283 is going to be a, a press fit. Don't use one of these to smack that on either. If you got a 283, go get the right tool. If you smack it on with this, take it and just give yourself a little love tap on the temple. I'm just playing. Do not do that. I'm just saying actually press them on. Don't smack them on. It's just a crank. Beat the hell out of it. Get this car set on this jack stands and give her the old death wobble. All right. Just right there where technically the jacks got it, the stands have it at the same time. Makes me feel a little better. Get the creeper under her. Old frame's not rusted out. And don't ask me how I know that happens. Frame was rusted out on my old four door and this one's actually good. So that's good. You know what? Just on the small chance, let's see what happens whenever uh, we throw a battery in here and see if we can just try to crank this thing. That's one way to remove it. Here's our old ground. Give her a super start. Well, she ain't caught on fire yet. How you like that seat cover? I don't believe we're doing anything. I didn't figure so, but you never know, guys. Uh, what if it was my lucky day? <laughs> I never have lucky days. One starter bolt. Two starter bolt. One face full of dirt. Is that a good look for me or what? Now we know why our starter didn't even try. Maybe we can get a pry bar on there somehow. Maybe without pulling this cover. So I can see some teeth on our pressure plate there, but we may have to pull this cover. I don't know. How many more bolts is it? I thought I'd be all fancy and shove this screwdriver in the ground, 
where I could clamp my camera to it. What kind of dirt you got out here? Hill. What in the Sam Hill kind of dirt is this? I think packs tighter than concrete. You could lag a two post shoplift to this shit. Got a new camera set up where I ain't got to shove this screwdriver through that one inch titanium that y'all call dirt out here. Wish me luck. Here we go. Come on, baby. She turned a little bit. Sounds a little crunchy in there. <laughs> Sounds like it's in the oil pan. It's not too hard to spin. Let's go with a shorter one here. Just playing, it's pretty hard to spin. Let's go back with the longer. Gotta try to put a screwdriver to my ear to the oil pan and turn this thing. Screwdriver is a really good way to hear what's going on, actually. Well, maybe not. There's a lot of crap back in here. I don't know how the mice got up in there, but hopefully that's all just a bunch of crap up in here. Yeah, it's packed. That's good. Better than the crunchies coming from my oil pan. Acorns. <laughs> About had enough of it underneath here let's check out this starter outside real quick you can see what i mean here on being just full of crap she so might be getting a little crunchy oh we got a tag here unit parts she's a doozy guys i did not know we were dealing with a rat infested one i've seen the outside pictures <laughs> I seen the picture of it from this side. I seen the picture after he cleaned it up. And I said, hey, I want to mess with that. I didn't know she was packed. Like the love. Oh, yeah. Get up out that thing. Woo. Put this baby in high speed, low drag mode. And we're going to give this thing a squirting. Maybe that'll help it. Now, he did say something about buying some battery cables because he's he had seen these ones. And, well, you guys know how battery cables go. Me, myself, I like replacing as least as possible when doing these will it runs so we can actually see what all it just needed to get started. If we pull the whole engine and just rebuilt it and called it a will it run, well, hell, it better run. You're in a shop. You rebuilt the whole engine. Obviously, no one does that, but I'm just saying, you know. I like being out and about and using a little bit of what we can find kind of thing, but as much fun as I have fighting battery cables, I'm going to look through his old ground box back there because it ain't a trunk box. And if he bought some battery cables, we will put a battery cable on this before we drop her back in. A little bit like you love it. Of course, the damned old camera died as I took that off there, but look how nice that looks, that old copper stud. This thing was brand new. 50 years ago <laughs> just playing this baby was remanufactured 50 years ago <laughs> where in the hell did you get these parts from <laughs> i think this thing was made before that starter was ever even remanufactured those boxes from freaking 1960 1968. I'm just playing. The box just looks old. <laughs> All right. Nice soldered in. They knew what they were doing in the 60s. Oh. Dropping stuff and losing parts already. <laughs> At least we know if I step on it, it ain't going to go into this ground. I dropped the freaking lock washer where I can't get to it. <laughs> Damn it. Luckily, we're in a salvage yard, so I came and visited my friendly neighbor, Chevy Love, here. And we had a lock washer right in the back. This is off that 4x4 four four unit. 4x4. Four 
four. I've never seen that. I've always seen the four X four. First time I've seen one of those. Kind of cool. <clears throat> Give that a little more torque than it had because it pretty much had none on it. Hopefully we can get that drop down there in a way. Now for our starter solenoid, I was gonna try to show you guys on here. I thought it may have S and I and it may somewhere. And luckily that stuff kind of soaked and it made it where I could wipe it. If you couldn't see, dead giveaway for a Chevrolet purple wire goes to your starter solenoid, the S. So I'm just going to clip that baby back there and we'll strip her and hopefully still have decent wire. When I come on these adventures, I always bring this little thing I kind of call my oh shit kit. Oh shit kit's just going to have a little bit of random stuff. I think I grabbed, yeah, a couple of those babies. Look, we even got some purple to make her match. Ow, damn, that jack handle don't give. That's two inches to the left. It would have knocked my loins clean off. Of course, I didn't bring nothing to crimp this with, but I do have some pliers and some vice grips, so we'll, we'll get something kind of figured out here. <clears throat> Holds decent. Holds better. Good to go, baby. We can bench test this thing right here. I recommended nobody to do this. Holy heavy duty. Look at that terminal in. <laughs> that thing's beefier than the Rock Dwayne Johnson. Got her positive on. See, we can't get her to ground. Well, she's working. Now the question is, does she have enough ugga duggas to crank this motor? Nothing like getting a rat's nest shower every time we get underneath here. I got one bolt in, see if we get the other started. You gotta be careful with the old half inch unit here. If y'all want to learn all about starters, all you got to do is go over to Mortsky Repairs channel. I swear that's all he does is work on starters. He should change his name to uh, Mortsky Starter Repair. He'll tell you all the technicals. Someone mentioned how he uh, made a comment calling me a bad speller. <laughs> a few people want to know what's going on. Y'all like drama, I guess. Hell, I don't know. Let's just say the joke I cracked on him, I deserve way more than what he said about me. He's actually being nice. <laughs> no, we're not really friends. We're just trying to set up something where we can have one of them YouTube boxing matches like all the other YouTubers. Just trying to sell the fight here, folks. Y'all seen my hands in that Chevy Love video. Don't nobody want this smoke. I come out there with my crazy hair and a rat's nest on my face, you know I'm coming to whip an ass. <laughs> yeah. Kind of flip-flopped our battery around where our positive's on this side. And I think if we do just one kind of zip tie to keep that off the old ram horns, we'll be just fine. I keep a whopping three of those in the oh shit kit. If it does run, it ain't like we're going to be able to get this baby up to temp since we're pretty well missing belts and hoses and yeah ain't gonna turn into one of them now we got a cheater for our starter anyhow hey speaking of ram horns I don't really have nothing to do with ram horns it's just the word ram have y'all seen them new i guess they're not dodge trucks anymore they're called ram and i'm sure i'm probably like 10 years behind but those big old tailgates saying ram are uglier than hell if you drive one i'm sorry but what a terrible idea they might as well made those things clear lenses with flashing LEDs just to get your attention even more instead of chrome. Like, I get it. You like your truck, but damn, that thing is ugly. Takes up the whole damn tailgate. Comment down below how long those tailgates have been out because I just now noticed them. <laughs> if that bolt wasn't broke off in there where I could put a bolt in this and get this to clamp down, I wouldn't even replace this damn ground. Yeah. She ain't coming out without a fight. Just going right here.
take our custom clamp off here. Another Oklahoma secret. I hate it. <laughs> whoever did it, whoever did that did a nice job on that one. It actually fit it well and it was easy to take off. Now this is a problem here. The problem ain't that that stud come out. The problem is there ain't room for two studs in this old salvage yard. So far, everything's threaded pretty easy. It's not a, I mean, everything's rusty, but everything's come loose pretty easy. Knock on wood. I know better than to say that. Here comes the bad luck. <sighs> the old stud tight. That shiny new ground. Drop the nut. Find the nut in the rat's nest. Drop it again. Get the hell out of here. Oh. Did I just say? All right, that's it. Find the nut for the last time, clean it, install it. Quit jinxing yourself talking about bad luck. That's a fine thread, baby. If we had to track down one of those, it might be a little harder. There we go. Finally showed that new ground who's boss. Now, I don't know this body ground's doing anything, but we just threw a piece in there anyhow. You know that old Oklahoma saying about butt splices? Two butt splices, don't worry about that. You're only halfway to the max. We still got two more to go on that baby. All right, now as much as I wanna touch that to there and see if it cranks over, uh, we may benefit from lubricating these cylinders. I'm just saying. Just saying it's been sitting since the 70s. I mean, free love times. What were y'all doing? Disco? I don't know. I was born in 91, you know? But that's a long time to sit without getting no uh, lubrication. Well, let's see. Oh, damn. That end looks nice, actually. Let's just pull a plug out of curiosity. What do they say with the SpongeBob thing three hours later? Not the worst spark plugs I've ever seen. Now, had this motor been stuck, she would have got the old Marvel mystery oil. I've been I've been practicing saying Marvel for you guys because I, I say it so weird. But maybe it's because all the rednecks I grew up around, I don't know, I always thought they called it Marvel. So that's what I still call it. But I promise I can read. But Mortsky done told y'all I can't spell. If it was stuck, we'd be pouring this down it. Since it turned over some, we're just going to hit her with the old Harvest King. Oh yeah, take that, baby. So here's the thing, as much fun as... Shut the hell up! These birds here are good. I started going at them birds and they all dispersed. Got out, they flanked me. Hit me from the side, hit me from behind. It's coming from everywhere now. What I was trying to say was, as much fun as it is to watch me pull all eight plugs and spray lube in there, let me knock that out real quick. Maybe by the time I get done and pick that camera back up, maybe I'll have a little fire going with a bird on a rotisserie. I didn't bring no damn lunch. Got all the plugs out. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but I'm gonna try to reuse them, see if we have luck. Uh, I need to spray down this side still. The rat's nest packed in pretty tight on this side. It chewed up to the plug wire, so we're going to ditch the plug wires. I'm not just going to replace two. So let's spray this baby down and start some lubricating. And uh, I need to spray this side down. <laughs> not the easiest target to hit, but I kind of spray around and you can hear it when you hit the hole. And then, of course, it quits running down the side of the motor. <laughs> I right, take some of that carburetor. Y'all know how much I have luck with carburetors. Why don't you have a little bit of that start soaking for me? Y'all know me, I'm generous with the lube. Oh yeah, that's precision. Precision. 
Looks like it has, may have 17 nuts on it. I have a little more on this side too. There you go, fuel pump, in case I gotta mess with you later. Well, that's one way to do it. What in the hell? You guys see what I'm talking about, my luck with carburetors? That'd be like a dirt dauber's nest, but it's made out of concrete because I told y'all that ground here is harder than hell. Yeah. How can a mouse even get poop up there? Like, that's talent. That is freaking talent. That breather sits right here. He had to try his little ass off to get up there to lay three turds. I mean, that takes effort. Little Rochester, two, what'd they call those? Two CGs? Good carburetors. I love them. You know, choke wheel open. Dirt daubers ain't holding us, so I guess that's a start. See what I mean here? Our plug wires are no good. Two of them on this side. Rat bastard. See how they're going down in this mess of rat poop I just put my hand in. Even if those two weren't chewed through, I'd cut these ones and give them the Oklahoma butt splice like we talked about. Butt splice some plug wires, baby. <laughs> All right, what we got going here? Damn cap looks new. You get all this crap off of it. I'll be damned. Come on. Yeah. These old spark pluggies, I'm just going to hit them with some brake clean and knock some of the loose crap off of them. I mean, they are kind of nasty. How's them old spark plugs dry? Uh, let's see if this thing cranks over. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> I guess it helps if you put your positive cable on. Now let's see if she cranks over. Yeah, kind of, maybe, sort of. Too much crap down there. That is what I was worried about. I know someone's calling me a dummy for not pulling the dust cover earlier. I honestly thought it went up higher and had a bolt up there that was hard to get to. Uh, let's drop this thing. <laughs> well, y'all can see all that crap falling. Oh, now I'm getting dripped on. Oh, it's just lovely underneath here. <laughs> Full free shower, free dirt in my freaking armpit. Uh, let me get this crap cleaned out, and we're going to try again, folks. Woo! Had to get out from underneath there and get some water. I'm getting covered in that lube, that rat's nest. Guys, it's fighting me. I thought it was about to actually lock up, and then it broke free. And whatever's wedged up in there finally broke free. It's so much easier to spin now. Let's see if we can get the rest of the crap out of there. If I was smart, I would have done this before I emptied a can of penetrating lube in the cylinders where... They can piss on me every time I crank this thing. See how easy it turns now, though? A minute ago, a minute ago, I was giving it everything, and it finally freed up, so let me finish this up. That's a pecan that just came out wedged between the block and the flex plate, or the pressure plate, sorry. And it's starting to get tight again. Ah, uh, it just won't go. It's full of so much crap. Oh, man. Guys, I bet I cranked that motor 3,000 times 
you can see where my arms worn out right there nice and red from slipping and smacking that a arm that feels good how they kind of do the edge of that metal where you can just hit it you know she still has one little rough spot coming around but overall it's pretty damn free enough that a good starter ought to crank it every time i kept starting it it'd make it to that little rough spot and it just quit i popped every hood and crawled there er, that er, get get <laughs> crawled underneath every old chevy out here and this starter is the one that uh, the pattern straight across uh, not the diagonal but everything out here is a damn diagonal i mean y'all can see me i'm filthy i've been laying underneath this thing just giving it hell i was about to call it quits but i was like kind of sounds like it has a weak battery so i pulled the damn battery out of the travel all well lucky there so this one has some explaining to do it sat on the charger all damn night i have no clue why it's dead just bought the damn thing so I don't know if the battery's bad or if my charger's messing up, but if it's the battery, I'll be seeing you soon, Mr. Chris, at the O'Reilly's. Probably got 17 diseases because I thought that starter was too weak and there's too much crap in there, but the damn battery. <laughs> the good news is it's cranking, so let's throw the spark plugs back in this thing. I did realize that the crazy crunching noise I was hearing every time I was forcing that motor was pecans. I mean, look, these things are everywhere. <laughs> All Most of this crap, kept falling down on here and i drag my creeper out and i dump it so if y'all think i'm crazy for just thinking it was a weak starter and so much crap in there y'all have no clue how much crap came out and now i'm absolutely filthy and i hate it and i gotta do something about it y'all better be happy i usually charge for a peep show take two sleeves away and this thing just went from my most preferred flannel to my favorite flannel all right let's put these spark pluggers back in and uh see if they won't uh See if she can't crank over on some compression. Got all the spark plugs back in except for number one. I'm going to do the finger plugger. Uh, ran a hot wire just from the battery over to here. Where we can crank this thing. I mean, there's freaking nuts in the damn alternator little fan, whatever you want to call it. I think one just fell out of number one cylinder. <laughs> Should be about right in there. Take the old scraper here. that stick out of there <laughs> you can see our mark you can see our mark on the balancer and our timing marks here so we know we're close damn this cap's like brand spanking new i mean it's rusted over but that thing had a recent tune-up nothing in here looks old points look new Rotor's pretty clean. I'd say somebody gave this uh, ignition old tune-up. Take the old rotor off. There it goes. Probably just lost the damn screws. Sure as shit. That's the advantage of holding a camera and doing work. Damn it. We're gonna worry about them screws in a minute. Right now we're going to look at the old points. I see our wires chewed up. Coming out the bottom there. So we need to take that wire to the negative on the coil. You can see right there our negative. And we're definitely going to use a cheater wire for the hot side. Give her the old Morkski flick, then uh, put that old special curve tip in there on it and kind of clean them up. Show y'all grade A salvage yard repair. Twisted that one piece of wire down there. Remember, when you twist wires, uh, I think I told you before, clockwise, uh, maybe counterclockwise. I don't, it creates less resistance. <laughs> I can't even remember my own lie to y'all. Forgot to buy electrical tape, so I brought some duct tape. Typical redneck crap. Now we need to get a hot wire going to that coil. I don't think I want to use the factory wiring. I know that's ghetto, but come on, guys. Look what we're working with, all right? <laughs> so we put this here. We should have a hot coil. Found a good beer. 
freaking flashlight. I know that thing belongs in the trunk of this. Holy hell, God bless America. If I thought that uh, freaking battery cable box was old, this one seriously might be from the freaking 80s. What in the world? Freaking Canadians. Mississauga, Ontario. I probably said that wrong. Hey, them babies look nice, though. Got them an uh, extension cord orange. We just want that coil wire. Where's it at? There she be. Throw her on. So with our coil hot, if our points are opening and our coil's good, we should have some spark. No spark. Slight knock. <laughs> I can hear oil starting to cycle. I got spark with my screwdriver, so uh, more than likely, dirty points. I did bring some sandpaper. Use that old sandpaper and fine tune these puppies. Coils ready for live action. Ah, coil's shooting a super hot spark, but it's coming from through here down to our ground. That's one of them sparks that's hot enough to knock your pecker in the dirt. We don't want to get bit by that. That coil's definitely good. I'm trying to figure out how the hell it's jumping all the way out there. I cannot get it to go through this coil wire. I've never seen one do that. But I'm telling y'all, that spark is hot enough. You do not want to ride that lightning, all right? <laughs> Switch back to the old coil wire, and I got her to quit sparking out of there, which is weird. Did adjust on them a little more. We are getting spark out of her. Well, it's kind of hard to show you and hold the camera. Spark's not as hot as I'd like, but we're going to press forward with it. I'm running out of daytime here, folks. Cleaned up the old rotor with a little sandpaper real quick, kind of right there. I may have not been able to find another starter like the one we have, but I could find some screws. Someone forgot to uh, pay attention to which one was number one, so we're going to find top dead center again. Just gonna put it being this one over here as number one, which is kind of weird. Didn't really do nothing to old distributor cap because it looked nice and shiny in there. Pretty impressive, actually. This one's actually turned into a little ass kicking for me. So I get for bragging on Chevys. How easy they are. Blah, blah, blah. See where that got me. All right. Coil on. Let's get a plug wire. Boy, this thing's hitting me with more roundhouses than I know how to handle. My spark was all over the place. Uh, I had the cap on a little crooked. It's on good. I did just test it, getting constant spark. So let me throw these uh, orange extension cords on this thing. Even if I don't get this thing to fire, I'm going to have a victory beer when I get to the house. It's a victory I ain't got frustrated and burnt this damn thing to the ground yet. So either way, a win's a win. Here comes the rain again. Probably for good this time. Since I'm getting half-assed close to pouring some gas down her throat. I knew eventually we were going to get a smoke show. There it went. Oh, baby. Got that smoke rolling. Just like Cheech and Chong in that 64. Damn it, guys. This thing has bad luck written all over it. I hope that just didn't smoke my battery. I had to grab a half and get those off real quick. I couldn't get a hot spark out of it, so I ended up throwing the new points in, throwing the new coil on. Spark looked a little better, still not perfect. 
sat up there, went to bump it, and after I bumped it once, I heard that starter start humming, and uh, yeah, that thing just smoked. I kind of went into panic mode to try to get the battery unhooked because these cables are hotter than hell. So this is what I get for talking crap, saying, you know, it's a small block Chevy. We'll get her going. That's what I get, huh? Make me look like a fool. I know some of y'all thinking I make myself look like a fool. I don't give a damn. Let me kind of pick up my mess here real quick. So here's the deal. Maybe you can notice my stuff's packed up. You can't win them all. I got my ass whipped today. All right, that's it. Take this one as an L. I think I just did a backwards L, did I? Nah. And guess what? Every one of you is gonna come across some stuff in life where you give it your all and you try your ass off and you still fail. That's just part of it. We've got some Fords going, Internationals, Datsuns. Get our ass whooped by a Chevy. <laughs> if we didn't live an hour away, we may come back here and try to get it to fire off just once, but I've got a family packed weekend. I was hoping to get it today. Uh, I may not be able to get them all run, but y'all know I could sell uh, some flip flops and a beach towel to Eskimo, right? put us park it in market we're always putting money in our pocket and putting junk in your driveway we ain't in front of my lot and we ain't behind it this week i had to go mobile for go assignment the 64 impala is nothing short of iconic it looks good hot rod factory or lowered with a set of gold dicks on it. don't blame me if you think i'm wrong you can take that up with the love machine and cheech and chong she's a two-door hard top that's ready for a cruising and she's got a big back seat that's ready for a bruising don't worry about rust. Don't worry about floor pans. You get free self-taught rust repair lessons with this purchase. Hot damn. This air conditioning runs off R12. You spin this little lever here about round 12 times. Air conditioning. The three on the tree is guaranteed to scare away the Tide Pod eaters. They couldn't drive it if they tried. Might be a little biased, but damn, the blue looks good. All she needs some two fours on a tunnel ram with no hood. Most folks don't know it, but the SBC acronym actually stands for sure, baby. Come on. That's your answer when the overwhelming amount of ladies keep asking for rides. Most folks don't know it, but the 283 actually represented how many asses you were supposed to whip a day. If you drove one of these babies. If you like fancy brakes, then she ain't the one. No juicer booster. And she's full drum. No power steering. You don't want that leaking crap anyway. If you want power steering, don't skip arm day. Three taillights on each side means she's top of the line. Only the sweet Impala had that nice behind. The old Putin thought he may snatch this off of DNH Classics. Well, my pocket's empty, so one of y'all should grab it. Blue potato? Yes, baby. White roof? Talk to me. Trim, that'll make you grin. Hell, what's not to love? This baby's sweet as a dove. $5,000. 50 Benjamin Franklins. 2,500 Thomas Jeffersons. 5,000 buckaroos. And don't forget, someone got a deal and it's a good one. Chances are they dealt with pudding here at Puddin's Park and Market. For limited time only, folks, pay $5,600 and you'll receive $600 off. Hot damn, that's a good deal. Look at me. <laughs> Look up whipped ass in the dictionary. See if it ain't me standing there looking like this. No, I didn't clear coat the travel all. It's raining like hell, so I got soaked. I got some goodies in the old P.O. box I wanted to share with you guys. Wasn't that Blue's Clues where he has a whole little chant about mail? Here's the mail, it never fails, it makes me want to wag my tail. The mail is here, it makes me want to grab a beer. Mail! Mail! Something like that. I'm going to get one of those and we're going to start having mail time together. <laughs> First up, Redneck Edition Emblem. Y'all know this is going on that lifted Corolla on 27s. You damn right. This is from... Well, hell, you gave me about three names to choose from. I'm gonna go with 2A Defender because that sounds like if I needed you to throat chop and drop a son of a bitch, you could do it for me. So that's from old 2A Defender. Thank you, sir. Nancy sent me some band-aids because I'm always cutting my hands or I, maybe I get my feelings hurt up. You know, she just sent me band-aids to help me and she cracks jokes in the comments all the time. She emailed me, asked me if I finally got them. I'm so busy, I don't even check my P.O. box. I actually have a special place for these, Nancy. These over here in the first aid Nancy cabinet. There you go. Lean your peroxide on its side. Perfect. This one's probably my favorite because I have no clue why. 
I guess maybe someone named Thea sent me some anti-aging formula. <laughs> Damn, I'm just gonna hit 30 next month. But hell, I ain't opposed to it. I'll go see if I can't knock 10 years off tonight when I take a shower. So to anyone who sent stuff, thank you guys. To anyone who wants to send stuff, the P.O. box is down in the description. So let me tell you guys why this is a victory beer. Because I laughed my ass off coming back from there to here, pretty long drive. And let me tell you why, all right? I try to keep everything PG, nothing too vulgar. But when I was doing my park it and market skit, I freaking heard something crawling on that 64. And I looked over and I'll be damned if I didn't see the rat crawling up through the fender well. Moving slower than molasses. It's slower than hell, folks. What I realized now was two babies holding on the bottom. <laughs> when I first seen it, I thought it was a rat that had a set of gonads on it like nobody's business. <laughs> so I'm trying to do this park it market skit and I see this rat come crawling through and the first thing in my, my head was, damn, look at the nuts on him. <laughs> Then I realized there was two babies hanging. You can't make that up. And then it set in to me until I was driving home and I thought about it that at first I really thought I seen a big old male rat with just a... That laugh I had from there back to here was worth the whole damn day. How about we have a moment of remembrance for those ones that we did get started? Is that a word? It is today. A moment of remembrance for the ones we did get started. This one won't even turn over. G.I. Joe and Pat, won't y'all come on out and blow this damn thing up for me? You had some army experience, right? Shout out to those guys. Pat, I hope you owe him 20 bucks, 100 bucks, or at least a tall boy or something. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed nonetheless. We'll be back to do it again. I don't know what we're gonna do up next. I really got one I need to go rescue. I'm running out of time to get it out of there, so maybe we'll try to get it next week. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at uh, Puddin's Fab Shop if y'all want to give me a follow. And oh yeah, the auction should have ended for last week's panel and we had a high bid going for around $1,000, so that's awesome. In the next video, I'll have all the wrapped up information on that. I will see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. That t-shirt's coming, all the t-shirts are coming, merchandise is coming, I promise you guys, I almost launched the website last night, and then I seen this one little tab called Taxes. Yeah, <laughs> them tricky little bastards.